With winter just around the corner and living with holes in our fireplace drywall for months, I think it's time to jump into the living room and start making progress. So let's take this space from construction site to a cozy work of art. Hello guys, welcome back to the cottage. I am still very much working on the kitchen cabinet fronts. 43 is a lot to make and clamp and router and build and then prep to paint and then build inserts. It's, um, it's not a project that can be done in a week, <laughs> at least for me. Even though I'm still working on all of those projects in the kitchen, I'm about to jump around again. <laughs> we are quickly approaching the holiday season. And it has been weighing on my mind that the living room still looks like a construction site. There are still holes in the sheetrock. The beadboard is still not painted. There's no trim around the windows or the French doors. The furniture is a little PC. Uh, there's just, it hasn't been thought about since we finished the projects. So we're gonna jump into the first episode of our living room makeover. Now, we have done some things in the living room. Obviously, we've done all of the flooring. If you guys saw us restore our floors, we have done the structural changes by adding the windows, adding the French doors, building out the fireplace. I did that, then did it wrong, then had to change it. It was a whole mess. Installed our fireplace. Our, our fireplace is working. I have it on for us, you guys and me. Uh, it is very much feeling like cozy season and with the cooler weather rolling in, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Christmas is gonna be here before you know it. I've got to get this living room done. So this will be episode one. Join me. I think today I wanna tackle finally painting this beadboard. This beadboard came from the walls in the bathroom. I salvaged every piece. Romeo and I put it up. I was so happy we were able to salvage and reuse all of that material to really give it a unique look behind the cabinetry that I wanna do. So here is my design idea for this back wall. Obviously, the fireplace will be right in the center. We'll have cabinetry along the bottom, and then we'll have shelving that goes from the fireplace to the wall all the way up. We also need to put crown molding in here. Okay, so project number one is going to be to prime the beadboard. What color we are going to paint it, not sure yet. Priming is first on the list. Okay, good morning guys. We got everything primed. All the walls in the living room, which was more than I thought we were gonna get accomplished, but Romeo secretly loves to paint. <laughs> so he just kept going. And I also went to town with two and a half bottles of caulking and did all of the beadboard. Romeo's already started, so the wall behind me is already gray mist. And gray mist continues into the kitchen walls and also the dining room. Like it's like a buttery white. It's really not white. I mean, you can tell like where we're painting, you can tell the difference. On the scale of color, it's white, right? It's a very calming color. So I knew I wanted the majority of the walls that color, but I wanted to do something more bold on the back wall. I'm thinking I wanna do the beadboard and this area, millstone gray, which is the same color we did in the entryway. I even had a dream last night that I painted this entire room millstone gray, and I was like, wow, that looks really good. But I liked that millstone gray in the, in the entryway was kind of a moment, and you looked through the entryway when you walked in the door at the color instead of it just you just being surrounded by it. So I'm thinking that, <laughs> I don't know how much of it we're gonna do. I know for sure I wanna do the, the beadboard, the, the actual shelving, and the cabinetry along the bottom, all the same color. So I'm thinking all of that millstone gray, and then we could also do the mantle, everything millstone gray, or we could do this, um, the textured kind of limestone look 
And it, I don't know, we're gonna start with the, the beadboard. It's gonna do a square, you know what I mean? In my dream, it was really pretty. I tend to have dreams about my projects that I'm working on, like my brain's just like working and, and building the room in my head. Okay, millstone gray. Now that we have a swatch up, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. I feel like it'll bring that moody library feel <laughs> into this space. has been sitting in <laughs> storage for quite a while. I found it at the Fredericksburg Trade Days, the flea market. Was looking for a mantle forever and found this one and I loved it. I, it was just everything and more. It had so much detail. It actually made me change directions on what I wanted to do with the fireplace because I originally wanted the interior fireplace wall to be rock. And once I found this, I thought it was gonna be too busy, too much, um, because this was just like beautiful. But it needs some tender loving care. First and foremost, we have to clean it. It's very dirty. Inside all of the filigree and ornate, and Romeo's just picking it apart. <laughs> it also has some separation here. You know, it's just, it's just coming apart. So we have to like glue it, clamp it, make it, you know, all square and perfect. There's also a hole in the top of it that I, I think that they used it, you know, to put wires through. We don't need that anymore, so we, that's something we can plug. The wires for the TV are actually going through the wall behind the TV. It also has this marbled paint design on it that I don't particularly want for the house. So once we clean it and get it all done, we're obviously going to paint it. So we have to do some, so I want to get it clamped. I want to get it cleaned up. Okay, for today, I just wanna get this clamped so it can dry overnight. And with wood glue, um, we can always put some more support. I see the nails where they're coming from. I could dry out in the sun for you. Follow the deep dark ocean down. For you, I'd build the biggest sky spend all of yep. my time giggling daydreaming is my new middle name this is not a game for me imagining is my new best friend and ready is all I see you just let it dry overnight yep. I got a PhD put wood glue clamped it let it sit overnight so it's been clamped for quite a while hoping that that does it we could always reinforce it with some nails as well take the clamps off and we'll see oh it held that, that's always a good sign okay now we gotta clean this thing I picked up, I didn't quite know what to do. I was kind of scared to power wash it because I felt like it might start um, picking or, or flaking off the paint that's there. And that could be bad because I actually want to paint it. So if there's flaking paint, then I'm gonna have to get all the paint off and that's a whole thing. Dude, I just got some Dawn soap because it's gentle and I have a sponge and a toothbrush. <laughs> So we're gonna clean it. So I'm gonna fill this bucket with water and put some Dawn soap in it. And we're just gonna go to town on it. this fireplace finally I did start this project a while ago 
Basically, I just need to cut some pieces of drywall, and this particularly is a Fire X drywall, so it's fire resistant, just to further help with the spread of fire in case, because this is a fireplace. So it's gonna look PC, I know that, but since we're going over it with a plaster and we're kind of having like this rough texture, it's really not gonna matter. So I'm gonna get it all screwed in, all the drywall, then we're gonna start with the plaster. Oh, you guys, look, it looks so much better. Like, major improvement on the living room in just like a day and a half, from the paint to the drywall patching. So now what I wanna do, before I start on the plaster, I actually wanna bring the mantle in here, and I wanna look at it. I think I'm gonna to have to alter the size of the mantle just a little bit in terms of its height. So let's bring it in and let's go from there. Watch the top. Wow. Oh. Oh my goodness. That's pretty. Well, yeah, it's pretty. That's pretty. But you see, I think I don't think it's tall enough. Okay, six inches. Because then, because the of the fireplace, it had to be positioned that far off the floor, without needing a hearth. Uh, so we we had to do it. it. There was there was no other option. It had to be the fireplace had to be in that exact height. You know what I mean? That's also why I wasn't too worried about all the patching because you see how much of the patches that the mantle actually covers. So it's like, and then we'll build it out on the inside. I'll have to research what I can put there. I know tile works, you know, but I don't really want to do tile. You would just paint some wood or maybe there's a material that I can use like the, maybe I can do just the non-combustible like drywall on the inside here since we'll paint it too. And then it'll be super safe and then on the top as well on the inside. So I think that might be the safest, but if you guys have any ideas, let me know if there's like something specific that I can use, but I don't think I wanna introduce another element like um, tile or marble. I think there was a piece of marble on this inside when we got it, but I looked at it. He had it in the back of his truck. I looked at it and I didn't, I, it wouldn't have worked for this house, but let's do the plaster. We're gonna do the same method that I did on the hood. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting plastered. By using Plaster of Paris, it's at the hardware store. There are totally other things that you can use, like joint compound and, and things like that. This actually worked really well. The negative and the positive of Plaster of Paris is it dries really fast. So you have to do it in small batches. So you're constantly mixing, otherwise it'll totally dry on you. That's what happened. Also, I mixed less water than it said because I found it was way too runny. So I had to keep adding Plaster of Paris. It definitely feels like flour, like the consistency of it. Okay, so there's one cup of plaster. Okay, and one cup water. Start there and then see what consistency we get. I still think it's too runny. Maybe it was a three to one I used. And I'm gonna use a joint knife and you'll kind of feel it, you'll kind of feel the plaster start to harden, you know, as it sits. So you just wanna kind of keep it mixing. I also have this drywall tape, so to speak. Um, it helps with like gaps and things like that to make it a smooth joint but it's not sticky, which totally threw me off. Um, so as we're doing plaster of Paris, I can totally put this on there to help with the, the seams.
guys. I love this plaster look. It looks so good, even better than I had imagined. I was worried about just making it perfect around the fireplace opening, like the actual fireplace itself, like the insert. I think it came out pretty good. So it's still wet. We're gonna let it cure really well. Obviously we're not gonna paint it in this episode, so we will paint it next episode. <sighs> but I'm very excited about this. Getting dark so much earlier now. Sorry for the cricket cricket noise. Okay, so this is what the back of the mantle looks like. Uh, so it's it's hollow. It's not really, there's nothing to it in the back. There's these pieces on the side that kind of creates that each side of the leg of the surround for the fireplace. And I think it supported the marble as well. But I think some pieces are missing. So it's not very, you see this? It's not very sturdy. So I'm kind of trying to make it sh more structurally sound as well. Cut some pieces of two by fours and slim them down to the exact dimension. And I'm thinking that I can just put the blocks in here like this and it'll keep it like square. You know, it'll keep it the exact width apart and I'll put one at the top and one at the bottom and then we can kind of create a top too because I think that's the part that's missing. See if I can just use this. Right, and then it'll give it more support. Okay, I wanna put the fireplace in place so that we can determine its height and things. Holy cow. Holy cow. Definitely too low. All the inspiration, my mom and I were talking, all the inspiration pictures and everything that you see about a fireplace, the fire actually sits low, not high. The fireplace mantle itself is just like too low. Um, so let's try even more than six inches. We're gonna try paint bucket size. Okay, so that's paint bucket size. That's definitely better. What we're thinking, and my mom and I were talking about it, we feel like the, if I just extend the legs of the fireplace, it's gonna feel really tall and skinny. And initially, I didn't want a hearth or any kind of like something coming out into the room. But I think that every project kind of grows over time and it kind of becomes what it's supposed to be. Um, so we're thinking that I definitely need a hearth. I'm just gonna put this piece of board there so we can see what that would look like. So a hearth would go from side to side all the way across and then come out into the room a certain amount of depth of, of inches. Okay, so that's what it would look kind of look like if something went all the way, oh yeah, that looks really good. That looks really good. This is about eight and a half inches now. So definitely more than the six, <laughs> I thought. It'll be the same amount of space on each side and the top. So it'll look more proportional. At least there will be some point of reference, some continuity between the spacing. If any higher than this, the TV is gonna be in the sky. The mantle's already almost my height. That's about as high as we can go. Let's let's pick our, pick our battles here. Okay, so since we determined that we think we need a hearth, what the heck is it gonna be made out of? That's what went through my head last night. and. I was like, we could do it out of limestone, which is originally what I wanted to match the outside. We could do it just out of like, you know, just wood and just paint it. Uh, we could pick a slab of some kind for there. And then I remembered when we were demoing the house, we found three chimneys up in the attic and those were for those old um, kind of wood burning stoves. And that's how they warmed the house. So there was one in every room. We kept one, which is above the pantry towards the back door, but two of them, the only way to get the brick out of the house was to drop it because it was just added weight. They weren't in, used in the house anymore and they weren't shooting up out of the roof. So there was just brick in the ceiling. So it was salvaged material that we could use. So once we dropped it, my dad like dropped them from the ceiling, I picked out every solid brick. So anything that wasn't chipped, I kept, and you can tell that they were totally from the fireplace. They have sooty, they're sooty, and stuff like that. So my mom and I were talking last night. I told her, I said, I do have those salvaged bricks from the house that we didn't use yet. So she was like, you could do it out of brick and you could 
paint it because I wasn't into the, like, how would you clean this? It would look so dirty, you know? So it definitely needs to be painted. They're all like that too. So where they were on the inside of the fireplace, they're like soot and it's deep. So I'm thinking we could make the hearth out of brick. And I, so I would build a box smaller um, to the exact size that I needed it. And then in order to make this an easier project, I could do two bricks deep. So let's see what that would be like. Yeah, that would be an 18 and a half deep or more, 18 and a half deep, which is more than the fireplace mantle, which is great. It would stick out more than surround. I'm hoping, oh my goodness, look, it's almost the same, it's the same height. So we could do this on the front like that and put them like that. Because if I put one on top of another, it's gonna be too tall. That's like too, so we could do this and then never cut a brick. You guys, we could just mortar it around a box. And then something from the old fireplaces become part of the new fireplaces, which is pretty cool. Some of the bricks are actually stamped. Some of them are flat. Uh, they don't have any like impression, but some of them are actually stamped with like a, it's like a local, I don't know, someone told me a story about it. It's like a local brick masonry place and it's pretty cool. So I've kept everything that we could and we're using so much salvage things throughout the house in such a special way. So you, you guys have a lot to comment about because this is a huge work in progress. First and foremost, you have to comment about the millstone gray after sleeping on it, I'm definitely thinking the sides, you know, so the beadboard, the shelving, and the cabinetry on each side. Then with the added of the plaster, we can do like a lime washy molten look, like kind of like my inspiration for both this and in the kitchen so that they kind of go together. And then we also have to paint the mantle. What I do like about the mantle is that because I, I cleaned it, but because it's still kind of aged in the inside, it's giving it a lot of depth. It's kind of like a natural glazing, if you will. So once we paint it, that's obviously gonna go away. And I think you're gonna see less of the detail visually. So we could always come back with a glaze, but we have to figure out what we're gonna paint that. Also, let me know what you guys think about the brick hearth. So this whole thing is coming out really, really amazing. I hope this gets you guys excited about episodes to come in the living room. I feel like for the living room, we have this to tackle. We have cabinetry and shelving to build. We have trim to put around the windows and the doors. I have to put in some floor plugs, hang lighting. We already painted and decorate. That's, that's really it. And we're really going to see the living room come to life in a couple of episodes. <sighs> This was major, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more renovation videos every Sunday here on this channel. Don't forget you guys get more behind the scenes, extra footage, see things first over on my vlog channel, XO McKenna Vlogs. So check it out there for two additional videos every week. And again, on Instagram, TikTok, you know, all, all the things, all the places. <laughs> so I will see you guys very soon for another episode. And I'm gonna still work on the kitchen cabinet front. Um, I've got like 14 going outside, so they're, they're going well. It's just so repetitive. I just need to get them done. And all the drawer inserts, 16 of those. 16? I don't know, something like that. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. <laughs> oh, I'm obsessed with this. I hope everything that you guys do in your homes just brings you so much joy and you just are so obsessed with it because you have to live there and stare at it. So if I have to live here and stare at this, I'm doing okay. <laughs>